Metaverse and the Andronicus Transmissions on Wolf Spirit Radio, Ever Beyond Radio, and Studio 9 Jam on YouTube. With your host, Jessica Ariel Morocco. Featuring JP as the voice of Andronicus. Please visit www.readingsbyrael.com. That's A R A E L. We came from the future. Spirit Radio. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today at um, Answers from the Universe and the Andronicus Transmissions. And so we are carrying on bringing in the message and continuing uh, our open channel or my open channel to whatever the universe wants to bring in, whoever wants to speak through and and talk to the planet. Um, and of course, all of humanity is the key focus here. This, even though many of them are speaking to me, uh, the message is very, very universal. And, you know, of course, we have our personalities and they have personalities and they have opinions just as we have. And there's so many, so many things going on. Um, so I want to bring in, hello, JP, how are you today? Hey, Jessica, I'm all right, a little tired. Uh, I've had, you know, we've, we both had our teenage sons over and, uh, you know, uh, same <laughs> issues, same issues. Like, I don't want to do that. Uh, leave me alone. Oh, I hate you. Oh, I hate you, but I love you. I don't love you. Oh, it's so confusing being a teenager. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, my son's going back to college. And, uh, <laughs> Everybody breathes a sigh, really. Oh, it's, it's lovely like, to see you. Yeah. It's so nice to see you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I've had a great summer with them, but I also, it's been a little trying to um, work with people and uh, still, you know, of course, I'm going to, what, what life, makes life enjoyable is that we have family and friends, and uh, there are times where um, I wanted to spend time with him and I couldn't really, um, reach out to a lot of people. So, um, you know, within about a week or so I should, or even, yeah, about a week or so I should be more open. If people want to do sessions with me, I apologize deeply. Um, I didn't, wasn't able to get back to people here and there, but it was a very, very challenging summer and, um, huge amounts of distractions. And I, I take it that there was op- opposing energies that, really didn't want people to be in the flow and to be in harmony. And so, uh, like I said to JP, I really felt like I've been um, uh, swimming upstream this whole whole summer. It's just been very, very difficult. Nothing really horrible happening, but just a lot of resistance. And uh, so, but, you know, that's to be expected. It could be worse. That's what I tell myself. It could always be worse than it is. And so we... Um, when we do it, when you're doing this type of work, um, you become more of a target or a focal point for other energies. And um, I've had my discussions and my thoughts, and so of course the transmissions are going to reflect some of this stuff. But let's let's stay on a lighter note for right now. I just want to tell everyone: is um, is the website up now, J- JP? Well, know, there um, is some Facebook? some things going on. Um... Uh, we've just been ironing out a few of the, uh, the minor typo errors, um, while we, uh, while we sort things out. But, uh, other, it's looking fantastic. I mean, Olivia is doing a fantastic job and we love her deeply <laughs> in all yeah, kinds of ways. She's so she's, sweet she's, and what a gift. Yeah. From, I mean, and she's so, and, and she's enthusiastic about the stuff that we want done. So like, how, how can you, you can't argue with that, can you? No, you can't. And, she, and she's, she's stellar. You know, she, she just did everything like in an amazing way. And, um, I just sent her over some pictures. Um, I don't know. I mean, she said the forum's open. Maybe we can ask yeah. if we can put the link up and yeah. people is, if there's a link where people can't mess around with it, but a link where they can just look at it and 
maybe access the forum? I don't know. Let me know. check this out. I'll, I'll see if I post a couple of links into the chat room, and obviously they'll I'll put them in the YouTube as well. So we've actually got, you know, uh, I bought a domain, and uh, Olivia and Jessica and I have been working on this. You know, I've, I've made this uh, this little um, uh, animation GIF of which yes. tells the story of of it. Oh, there you oh. <laughs> go. She's done it again. Vanessa is always like three times faster than me. You know, I mean, I'm going <laughs> click, click, and talk, and click, yes. and click, and I go to the chat room. Oh, there he is. She's already put it in there. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> wow. Wow. And it's, My it's Clandronic, Clandronicus, right? Indeed. <laughs> Clandronicus. Uh, <laughs> is the name of the forum. Uh, and you can go there and... Because um, we're all part of the clan of yeah. Andronicus. And it just to make it fun and enjoyable and exciting and even controversial, uh, opinionated what have you, uh, just let's all be respectful in honoring one another as having value in, in their own truth. Exactly. Everybody's got their own perspective. Yes, <laughs> their own perspective. Absolutely. Not wrong or right. Everybody's right. Ah, so yeah. that's brilliant. And, uh, yeah, so, um, oh, Olivia's already posted a, um, some art, which is pro uh, nothing in there. Oh, I must be logged into Ripple. All right. Yeah, nothing yet. Yeah, um, so, nice. but uh, I mean, it was right at the beginning. It's you know, we, we're right. You know, yeah. it's a hard hat area kind of thing. We said I did some of the illustrations so that all the characters can be viewed. Um, there's uh, different feedback that I've gotten from a few different people, including you, JP. Hmm. So, um, so yeah, talk talk about. Have you been having, I uh, see, I keep asking you and you haven't been saying anything. Have you been having fun doing these paintings? Cause you've been using color, um, to depict the, you know, the, the characters. Um, yeah, well, they're, they're animations. So, I mean, that's, that's my style, I guess. Uh, good or bad. That's, that was the best way for me to depict what I was seeing. You made yeah. animations, did you say? Well, I would call them animations because they don't look like real life. Oh, so oh, you mean like they're cartoon-like? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but they're beautiful. I, I particularly love Aries. Is it? No, Mars. The yeah. depiction oh, of Mars can... is a, his eyes are just vibrating. Mm. Uh, and he looks, re you know, he doesn't look like the sort of terrible god of war that we imagine Mars to be. No, yeah. no, but that's the way He's he really showing was. another side of these beings as well. Yeah, that's the way he looks when I see him. Um, uh, you know, Andronicus is not the way he looks now. It's more of the way he looked when I first saw him. So if people are trying to figure out what does he look like now, that could be a later reflection. Um, but for right now, that's uh, we're going back to the way he looked when he was seated uh, in the lotus position, meditating and trying to communicate. And... Um, you know, getting back to the whole concept of, uh, the, I think we're going to probably be talking about meditation. Uh, we had a very, very interesting interaction with, um, uh, Audrey, who was on, on, uh, Max Steel show last night, which is, if you haven't had a chance to listen to it, um, Max had a whole bunch of information about what he was doing and the work that he's doing for, uh, you know, for everyone, and um, and then as it, as it begins to evolve further, um, you know, he ends up having Audrey on, and Audrey starts talking about meditation, and and it's like a star meditation, absolutely magnificent. But uh, going full circle back to Andronicus, Andronicus when he was trying to reach out and communicate. It, I didn't realize, I thought it was just communicating, but it was also raising in vibration through um, that star energy. So, um, yeah, that that's what was going on. Uh, so can, can you take it from there, uh, JP, for yep. one moment? Yeah, you've got to go. Uh, yeah, so I was thinking also um, uh, fans of Andronicus, you know, the Fandronicus group. <laughs> It's Clandronicus as well. So, yeah, it's uh, very interesting that it's all building up. And uh, this character who we met last night. Okay, so his name, if I can get this right, I, I, I need to look it up again. Cause Hi. Hiya. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm just looking up uh, the, his actual name. Um, 
which is uh, about wait, 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 12 lessons wrong. Gonna say, you're not going to say Audrey? Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to say his name because I don't know if he feels he wants uh, anonymity. All right. Well, we'll yeah. call him Audrey then. Um, yeah. But uh, he spoke about his um, his arrival. Now, here's the thing. Many years ago, there were these pictures that were published on the Internet um, that said, look at this. These are real alien hybrids. And uh, it described this uh, seven-foot woman and her, quote, son. And uh, I remember this story. And they were held at Area 51. And it's exactly the story that, uh, that Anne Audrey gave. Uh, and mm-hmm. he said that, you know, the, the woman wasn't his mother. It was his lover. And they reincarnate. And uh, he was just kind of growing into this new body when they, um, they, uh, they got captured here. Um, mm-hmm. She didn't speak a word. Um, and Neither one of them did because they speak telepathically. Yeah. And uh, they were, um, they. <laughs> there's this picture, and there is this picture, and she's, she looks like a Norwegian punk. Yeah. And she's got this real kind of attitude look on her face, which, if you were captured by the CIA, I would have that look on my face as well. <laughs> you know, I would have a real F you face. And that's what she's got. And, and the boy, he's equally. Um, and, you know, you see this gorgeous little beautiful boy with these big, very pale blue eyes. Um, and, you know, he's now a beautiful, what looks like a, I mean, he looks like a Californian teenager to me, you know, but he's yeah. like, you know, I'm mean, like 4,000 years old or something. And it was funny because he was giving us information about who we were. And I kept on telling him, I knew, I, I just like his essence. Mm. I just knew, knew him. Mm. And I said, I know. And he kept on smiling when I said, I know you. <laughs> I know you. And he goes, well, you were on Lyra. Yeah. And I said, yeah, yeah, I was there. And, and we were both, yeah, and you were, oh, what was the name? It was like right next to Lyra. But I think you were on Lyra before then. But Well, um, was he was he was talking more currently. Yes. Because, yeah. um, right, so here's the thing. We got a bit of, uh, is this geography? Stellar geography, right? So he was talking about the stars of the Pleiades, Atlas, uh, Tegeta, um, Alcyon, and uh, Era, where a lot of the Aryans come from, is what he's saying. The the true Aryans were Aryans. Yeah, Aaron. Yeah. Aaron. Now, yeah. my name this is, is Perrin. Have you noticed? Yeah. My name is Perrin. Perrin, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And I'm thinking, oh, Pleiadian Aaron. All right, okay, get you. All right, so anyway, um, so there's the uh, the Aaron's, and he was also saying that Semyase is a race, not a person. Yeah, he said it different though. He didn't say hmm. Semyase. He said uh, Semjasi. Semjasi. Yeah. Semjasi. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's very interesting because names are really weird because, of course, everybody's telepathic. So names make no difference. <laughs> so he's like, saying, essentially, yeah. the darkness is striving to obtain the DNA of the Aryans. Mm. And he, he uh, we, we had a discussion about why I was targeted mm. as a young child. And he said that there was probably, for this, they, they've recognized some fragments of the Aryan in me, uh, the, or the Sumjase through somehow. Um, it wasn't just, I don't think it's just gen- genetic because they didn't really target the rest of my family as they did with me. So, but I have, um, I don't know. I have the lightest eyes. I think, I don't know if that's, that's one of the features, mm-hmm. but, um, something like that. Cause his eyes are almost transparent. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the color is, 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 very it's not pale. white. It's just very, very pale. Very pale. Yeah. My eyes, people have always told me my eyes were pale, mm. but not to his degree, of course. Mm. Mm. Um, but he was saying like, I have a part of it. He has the whole package mm. of what they were looking for. And then he says it was, is not that they just wanted a part of him that, or they, that he, they just want information which he was willing to share. He says, but they just wanted to extract from him like he was a lab rat. Yes. Yes. Which was hard, 
when when I heard about the um, the horrible violence and cruelty oh, that man. they put on him, and he couldn't speak, he couldn't speak yeah. uh, audibly because that's not the way they communicate. And he he was he said he endured in tr- tremendous pain. It was like torture. And um, he spoke about this in, in a kind of we had an after show conversation that lasted another two yeah. hours. I mean, the show was three hours long. We had another two hours after them, just just Max, uh, uh, no, just Jess um, and uh, Audrey and myself. And it was very compelling. Um, and also, he he very much he very much got comfortable. And I think the next time we speak to him, it's going to be very a very much more flowing situation because he knows who we are now. Well, I, I I want to just put this out there that there has to be um, alien rights because they're here to assist on the planet, yeah. and we do not have the right to just tear up their bodies and try to extract DNA yeah. and do multiple testing on them like they're some kind of creature. Yeah, he's just an off-planet human. I mean, not yes. just. I mean, he is a, an off-planet higher human. And, there are ancestors. Uh, yeah, and cousins and... Yeah. Oh my God! We, we, you know, I was sitting there, and in, inside it was just like, you know, I was having a hard time enduring his story of what what they did to him, and they they, they really they would strap him down and and really do things to him that cut into his flesh yeah. and try to see what he had. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like like uh, tear up his arm or whatever they felt like doing, yeah. and it's just like that's appalling. It's yeah. appalling on so many different levels. That um, I, I felt very angered at the time, and granted, some of the species that do come down are probably need to be contained because they're violent. But the non-violent ones, who who gives them the right to go ahead and start abusing them to that degree? I mean, I, I feel very angry right now about it, and um, because you know that they're here, they're coming here to assist us, to support us, to protect us. And they fall into the wrong hands. And to be honest with you, I don't know who's, if this is just strictly humanity doing that, we have a lot to be ashamed of. Horrible, horrible thing. And if we're going to look at, look at the way that, you know, animals have been treated, look at the way that other humans have been treated, um, look at the way that star beings are being treated. Uh, we are self-defeating, and, and it's it's only a small segment of the population. It's this the is Nazis. Not the, it's the Nazis, is, you know. Yeah. Uh, we and have to nuts. just stop the Nazis within us. How do we do that? Yeah, yeah and it's just any, any you know, I mean, like you can be in a neighborhood, and there's just like Heartless. one person that's so mean and so horrible. And we Heartless. need to stop yeah. perpetuating this cruelty. We, not, we need to stop perpetuating um, bullying and anything. That engenders this type of behavior um, as as people get older, or people that are kind and they have to endure cruelties from others for no reason, for no reason at all. Mm-hmm. And and uh, you know people manipulating others for different reasons, jealousy. I swear, jealousy to me is equivalent to murder. I mean, it's it's so horrible what people will do to outdo another person. Um, to target another person because they just don't like them because of for whatever reason. There, there's just so many different attributes we need to be away with. Just let it go. And uh, it's self-defeating. It's going to impact everyone if we don't stop. And uh, so I'm asking for alien rights or eight, you know extraterrestrial rights. Um, as visitors, they have a right to be here. Uh, especially if we are part of their genetics. So that's, sorry, but it had to be said. <laughs> a little, a little rantette, darling. Very lovely. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I mean a very serious. I mean, it's a really serious subject. Um, and, and really what it's about is just, you know, we got to stop these goddamn Nazis from, uh, from whatever they're doing, you know, and roll them up into a little ball. Um, put them in a place. Can you can you get them to go to Geb or something? Can, can they can? Yeah, they need to. They need some serious step. learning. Yes, yeah. and they. You know, um, in uh, the Clockwork Orange film, 
the mm-hmm. Nazis were shown were given that treatment. That's what they did. They they showed them films of how violent they were, uh, and some of them actually got turned on by it, and they became the uh, the dark uh, cabal's uh, henchmen. Um, and some were ashamed by it, and they became the CEOs of corporations like Grumman and, and, and uh, Northrop and all that. And um, and the ones who were kind of neutral, they went into the CIA. So that's where all the Nazis went. And um, they that, that all happened in the north of uh, Scotland, right? Sort of about uh, mm-hmm. 100 miles from here, north. Anyhow, anyway, so uh, shall we... Um, Kurt, I'd like to bring in Jacob oh, Wingate. Oh, we got a, we got a, a guest first, yes, right? Okay, yes, so let's... I'm sorry, he's probably waiting and waiting. Yeah, I've asked him to stand by. Uh, yeah, it's only been half an hour. I know an hour. it's been half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. But there we go. Um, so, do you want to introduce Jacob while he, we're waiting for him to pick up the phone? Yeah, well, uh, Jacob is, has been listening to the Andron- Andronicus transmissions. And on occasion, he gives me some feedback. I've done some sessions with him, and we've seen the connections that he has. And um, always provides... Morning. Uh, uh, good morning. Or actually, yeah, here. I don't know where it is over the, what it is over there, JP, but is it evening there? Uh, early in the morning. Oh, okay. So, good afternoon to you. Good morning, JP. Good morning. Good day. Where are you? Good day. <laughs> Where am I? Are you in Sydney? No, I'm in New Zealand. All right. Do excuse me. Wrong antipodes. <laughs> so, uh, so welcome to Andronis, the Andronicus Transmissions. Thanks. Good to be here. So, Jacob, uh, we were talking and I, I was explaining to everyone, um, you and I have had a few diff- different discussions and uh, we, I've We've done some sessions together and, you know, you, there's a strong connection between you and, uh, some of the members of the Andronicus group. We co- we're calling it the Clandronicus now. Uh, yeah, I saw that on the, um, on the website there. <laughs> uh huh. So, uh, you know, I'm sorry we brought you in a little later. I know that you have, um, a scheduled time that you could come in here and I appreciate it, but I got a little, uh, fired up about some injustices toward um, extraterrestrials, but um, yeah, uh, I heard I heard a bit of that. I'll have to listen to Max's show last night. Stonking! So, what a stonking show that was! Yeah, really. I mean, Max comes out right the, out of the gate, and he's like, "Well, we deleted, we we defeated all the reptilians, and like ninety percent of the reptilians in the universe agree with me now, and they're all my followers." So that's where we started. <laughs> and, really? Wow. Uh, yeah. And then yeah. we had, uh, Audrey from, uh, from, uh, Era of the Pleiades, um, uh, talking about his experiences when he lived in Area 51 with his, uh, with his love. Yes. So okay. long story, wow. big, big yeah, story, yeah. very long story, but they also, he also talked about these, the species that look um, like the crustaceans that came over. And so, uh, this is something that Jacob heard me talk about on another show. And I think Jacob is that, that's the primary thing that you want to discuss today. Yeah. Well, um, it was, I think we were having a session and it was, it was just in passing that I mentioned, um, yeah, this whole big world that's happening uh, to me. And, and just in passing, I mentioned the crustaceans and, I actually hadn't heard uh, Max's show or anyone talk about them beforehand. I just sort of mentioned that in passing, and you said that the the uh, well, a couple of nights before that you had the show with them when Max was talking about them. So um, yeah, so basically it was I was just in a sort of meditative state, and um, a crustacean came through, and he said his name was Jalaya. Uh, well, that's what I got, J A I L A. Um, he said he was uh, an aspect of me from an, another dimension or reality. I don't know. He felt like he was a relation in a way, like a brother. Um, mm-hmm. and... Or is he you? Do you think he was you well, from that dimension? He's not himself. Well, I, I think he was sort of alluding to... Um, the time shift on on my birthday, August the twelfth, nineteen eighty three, with the 
the Montauk project. And he said that um, part of me came through from that time, from where he was. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know exactly, really. But he said he was um, from a planet called uh, Xeron, or X-E-R-O-N, um, and that they had recently removed um, some suppression from their reality and that they were uh, coming here to help with us um, and what we need, needed to do. Um, but it was, a, it was a really positive experience. Um, I actually sort of cried um, when I finished talking to him because it was like I met this long lost person that I hadn't seen for such a long time. So um, I'm definitely on the same page as Max is that they think they're definitely benevolent and, and here to help. Well, we, we both saw it at the same time. It started going coming through, and he said, I don't know, there's someone coming through, and he started to describe them, and I, I took a look, and I, I was able to see more in depth, and uh, I think um, Nicole was there, and all three of us. It was very emotional because we were getting the information that they were coming in to help help clear the planet. And so yeah. um, there's an as it's like an aspect of you or, or a connection that you have to these beings that are here to do uh, benevolent work, and uh, which further explains what I'm, I've been trying to say all along is that um, we, you know we focus in on the, the contrasting species that are coming in off planet. Um, but we we need to be addressing the positive ones that are here that are being overlooked and undermined and and ignored. And uh, they're they're really doing tremendous work, and if we allow and support them, um, we we can get the help that we need. I'd like to say that we can do it without them, but um, they're, we're dealing with forces that have uh, abilities that are beyond what humanity has uh, as far as resources. Uh, they're telepathic abilities. All species, their telepathic abilities is quite prominent, and uh, with the reptilian species they're so strong so powerful that even some of these very highly evolved other beings um have problems with them and end up becoming enslaved by them so uh, i know that that uh the reptilians have this inbuilt scalar uh technology and i actually had an encounter with that this week which which i thought was going to bring me right to the edge and i do have a lung fuse but it was I was so upset one night, and uh, finally, when I got home and settled in, and there wasn't anything going on, I could actually hear this high-pitched sound, the scalar sound, and I broke it, and then it was gone. Yeah. Um, so then I realized, I said, oh, this was an attack, um, because then after that, all the anger, frustration, anything I was feeling just, just dissipated, it left immediately, so... Uh, Anything yeah. else that you can recall that happened with with the species or that knowledge of insights, or do you do you still communicate with this um, being that you connected with? Yeah, so that that was the first encounter, and that was in in May, um, and then uh, just a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, he was there again, and but he was with a, an Amurtha this time. Okay. Um, and. The Amurth, uh, he wouldn't talk to me. He was trying to do it all telepathically, but he eventually said his name was Jack, and I could call him that for the time being. Um, but basically, the Amurtha was more doing the communication, and he was saying that he was he was happy that I communicated and, and met Jelia again because we'd, um, our connection was important for the future. Um, and then, yeah, was sort of more talking with uh, the Amurtha around Waverin's name start with J, and he said that the J had a, you know, Jessica, JP, July, Jacob, Jahia. Um, the the J had a an important signature, more more of a hook, um, for mm. you know connection with other things, and and that's how I sort of view myself as uh, more of a hook for you know, energy or, or what have you to sort of 
be laid down into the earth and, and what we're doing now, um, like a connection to a line to, to the higher source, more of a conduit than anything. Anchor point? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, yeah, that's how I, how I sort of feel it. Like, like you'd sling a, a, a hook underneath a, an old log or something and, uh, you got a, a, a firm anchor there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, have you, did you see any Amirtha sort of around with what you saw with the crustaceans, Jess? Uh, not necessarily accompanying them, but I could see that they would be working with them because the Amirthas have a uh, critical role in all this. They seem to be the, the checkpoint for a lot of them, and uh, they were also a checkpoint for me. It kind of drew me into a lot of this stuff. Um, they're... Uh, You know, my interactions with them, I know people have different opinions, but my interactions with them is very childlike and uh, very honest. Uh, They do like the simple names like Jack and what's that movie that they based it off? It was a Bob. Paul. Paul. That's it, Paul. And uh, they, they actually had me go on this little journey looking for someone by the name of Gary. And it was a a Mercer that was missing and they kept on saying, where's Gary? And I don't know. I said, I'll help you find him if you need me to. And I believe we located Gary, but Gary still has forgotten who he is, and he's a little bit um, uh, unsure of himself. But in time, I would like Gary to uh, have more, spend more time with Gary and help him uh, reconnect. Um, there's there's another there's others too that are coming back. Those that have incarnated that were part of the Emirther the Emirther clan, and uh, they're uh quite interesting they usually have a wonderful sense of humor and and uh this this one by the name of Gary likes to sing songs yeah, um, cool right makes, yeah he has these little sweet little uh not Gary Newman no 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 he's he's not famous because <laughs> right. I was just wondering uh, Gary Newman uh, is a kind of weird looking guy <laughs> Isn't you he? never know. You yeah. never know. Yeah, we we put we, yeah. you know Dag. You know, <laughs> yeah. the, I just need to say this three letter name, Dag. You know? <laughs> Dag. Yeah, D- David Bowie. That's what they call him, Dag. Um, I don't know why, but that's. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that um uh, was interesting is that uh, Audrey said that he knew Andronicus. Andronicus was part of the Lyran. Um, uh, uh, was it Council of Seven? Yeah, that was an interesting <laughs> little side turn as well. I thought, All right, you've heard of this guy, really? I said, yeah, yeah, because you said he introduced and said, Jessica, tell um, Audrey about your show. And I started telling him, and he goes, and he smiled. He goes, Andronicus. He goes, Yeah, I know him. <laughs> and he said that he was, you know, part of uh, the the Council of Seven. He goes, and then. He goes, and then he just laughed, and we didn't see him anymore. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Jess and I both went, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he just kind of nodded. Like, well, that, that's Stopped that's another it. journey. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, yeah, it's a journey, man. Yeah. And he was smiling. I said, do you think he's here? And he goes, he just nodded his head like, yeah, he's probably here. Mm. Wasn't sure, but kind of, you know, <laughs> it's almost like we kind of let let Audrey know that Andronicus probably wasn't that far from him. Mm. <laughs> Vanessa saying Andronicus gets around. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he has. Yes, he does. <laughs> but, but for those that are skeptical and wondering about this, uh, yeah, that was that was a nice verification, wasn't it, JP? Mm, mm. So, uh, should we, uh, without less ado, move on to the uh, communications themselves? Yeah, unless uh, Jacob, is there anything else that you'd like to? And, and by the way, thank you very much about the little the the J thing. That's a, that's been one of my uh, one of my interests. You know, why am I called J, and why do I hang out with all these other J people? You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, my uh, Rodan. Well, I, I told myself, but Rodan confirmed that my my Andron, Andromeda name was Jahia, which is it's like J J A H to me is sort of a a, a godly type thing, and then. Uh, IA is the opposite of AI, so I like looking at those sort of funny play upon words uh, mm-hmm. in there. But um, just the last thing before I, I move on is that uh, other than Rodan, I've been 
the strongest connection for me has been Jakar, really. And um, we've been basically when he comes through, he'll just sort of right come with me and we'll sort of jump on a, a magic carpet essentially, and he'll take me to various parts of the earth. And um, so we've basically it's just sending energy in through me. Uh, usually it's with a purple light or sometimes gold. And he just wants me to focus on certain regions like, um, for instance, all the nuclear reactors in India and CERN and HARP and um, Pine Gap in Australia, uh, North Pole, um, West Coast of America. So I don't necessarily know what we're doing there, but um, that's what he's directing me to do. And that's basically he's saying he's using his energy through me and me being the hook and the anchor to solidify it and um, in these parts of the world. So, yeah, I think he's um, um, he's doing some good stuff there. Um, and, Fantastic. yeah, I'm enjoying working with him. Fantastic. So, you know, you can like I was saying last night, Jess, the picture is emerging. You know, there are little little points of light all around the world. There you are, Jacob, in, in New Zealand, opposite the planet to me in Scotland. There's Jessica in New England, you know, there's, uh, there's, uh, you know, Olivia in Canada. Uh, no, Olivia's in France. You know, we've got these, mm-hmm. these points that are looking very much like we're getting close to that old Becca Hagen's grid, grid. You know the one I'm talking about? No. Right. The uh, Becca Hagen's grid is the famous, it's a black and white, um, very rough, uh, picture of the world with these, um, points joined by lines. Very kind of, it was like a photocopy of a, va- of a fax. Um, but it's, it's like shows where these, the crystal points, the crystal vertices of the planet are. And we, okay. we, uh, I'm so grateful that there are people that are stepping up and remembering why they're here and, and, uh, coming to realization of their, their star connections and, and all the beautiful things that are available. And, uh, so, uh, Jacob, you're, I'm grateful for you to, come forward and to talk about your experiences and share with everyone um, because there are many light workers, there are many people out there doing things and um, we are a team, we're all working together there's no one that's above the other uh, so just because I have a show doesn't mean that I know more than everyone else but I, you know, I do have uh, quite a bit of information and I also appreciate and value uh, what others have to say and to contribute to this and that's how it happens. It can't happen by one. It has to happen by many. And every single one of you that are participating and listening in and are grasping the pieces of information that are helping you to remember, then this brings you to that next level where you start to cover the areas of where you live and what you're doing um, and to help support uh, this whole process of ascension. So thank mm. you. Thank you, Jacob. No, cool. So, yeah, I'll, I'll sort of uh, leave it there. But I just want to thank, um, you know, Jessica and JP for what you guys are doing. And, you know, you're helping me grow and I'm sure many, many people out there as well. So um, really, really value what you guys are doing. And, um, yeah, go team. Okay, go team. Clandronicus. <laughs> 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 so thank you very much, Jacob. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. See ya. Okay, thank you. Bye. So... Shall we do some standard orbit, Captain? Yes. Straight to it. Um, Andronicus, Rodan and Metis, in that yeah, order? Yeah, we don't have a whole lot today, so I don't really yeah. feel pressured, because in the end, we're supposed to be bringing a uh, Viking who's supposed to be joining us. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I haven't heard from him today, so Viking, uh, next two hours. Well, okay, for you and your show. Awesome. He'll be awesome. There. So he's, he's available. Yeah. Perfect. So let's see. Where do they want to go first? Hold on. Let me ask. Uh, uh, and we're going to go right to Andronicus. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, Andronicus is in a funny state here. So just. <laughs> he's always in the mood. Here we yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. He is. He's, he's, a, he's a very, very complex personality and he's both powerful and, and fragile at the same time. So, uh, so anyhow. I see you're meeting many of my star friends. I do feel ashamed how I have treated you. I know I have appeared benevolent, but have not really done the right thing by you. 
I have influenced your life in many ways. I brought you sorrow, abandonment, and the like. I did this because I was angry with you. Not because I disliked you, but that I wanted you to understand my feelings and experiences on this planet. It's been disruptive to be here. I come to see you, and then when I am close, I choose another partner or other, cir or other circumstance. I am finally realizing that I have been cruel and self-absorbed, and I have never considered your thoughts or feelings regarding any of this. You don't tell people why you're not fully searching for me, and this is the truth of the reason. You know what I have done to you, and you've never said any of it. Instead, you allow me to go on about myself as if I have some kind of heroism in my tone. This was never the case. I'm not communicating with you to rescue anyone. I heard your conversation with Metis, and he's right. Why are you bothering with all of this? Why don't you let it go? How can you allow us to just tell our stories while you live with very little? Your life is void because in many ways I took it from you. While you've listened to us, others are out enjoying their lives. Don't blame me for your feelings. I wouldn't blame you for your anger. I'm feeling ashamed about all of this. And I don't know where to go or who to talk about it to. Humanity cares about other things. They don't want to know about other existences. We walk amongst all of you and you deny our existence. Not you personally, of course. You understand all of it too well. I want to come clean, as Ketron says. He seems to bridge both worlds and speak both of our languages. We are a sorrowful bunch, thinking we could help humanity. Instead, they want to destroy us and use us as lab rats, harm us in so many ways. Do you realize that many of us has come, have come to assist in a great way, but your media has kept us from communicating with you? They mock us and justify harming us in a way that is so inhumane that one can't imagine. Some say to us, Why don't you leave? No one cares. Worry about your own species. Do you realize what you are to us? Only we remember. You don't. There will be an exodus of many of us soon unless the planet awakens to our truths. If we leave the planet, then much will transpire. I don't want any of it, and none of it is necessary. But it is important that you know we are holding back a lot of calamities. Andronicus, why are you telling me this now? What is happening here? You need to know. I took my frustrations out on you, and you never deserved it. And I'm going to stop it all now. Everyone is backing off from you without a struggle. You have been successful and got through the lion's gate with ease. Unfortunately, the ones whom we put great energy into had failed the task completely. Now we are left standing as fools, wondering what had gone wrong. Why did you do all of this? It's like bidding against your own team. No, I was trying to be reasonable and choose the people who are most capable of carrying out my assignments. You didn't seem capable to carry it out, so we brought in others. Instead, it turned contrary, and they were never devoted to us at all. <laughs> it was another ploy of Hera. Of Hera. I've left. Nah. It was another ploy of Hera. I have nothing left in me now. How much longer do I have to endure this punishment for assisting a goblin? Hera. Assisting her into your reality it has been an unrelenting nightmare. I'm going off to another sector. The Lyrans might take me in again. I think I've had enough, and I am weary. Metis is right. Go on now with your life. Don't speak to us any more. You are deserving of so much more than to have us taking you from you, taking from you without any sense of reward or freedom. Well, I agree. This is really ridiculous, but I, I don't do it for you or me. I actually do it because it's helping some people. I don't want any more stars. Ow, oh, shit, sorry. Ow, oh, bugger, bugger, bugger. <laughs> sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> I just spilled my tea on my keyboard, oh, no. which oh, sets no. off all, all of the jingles all at once. 
That must have been Andronicus doing this. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Anyway, hang on, I'm just going to go and get a, a, a cloth to tidy up. Please, uh, start that paragraph again so you can do it proper with feeling. Right. Did you Did you need to get the cloth? Yeah, give me a minute. Up? Okay. So we're going to hold on to that. I just, you know, we're right in the middle of the transmission, and we had a, a little bit of a something happen, but... Um, there's a lot of emotion in this. There's lots and lots of emotion uh, coming from Andronicus, and, and the feelings that I got from him were uh, more despondent, more like uh, he felt like a failure. Not so much that he was angry or trying to lash out at me, but rather really thinking that he was doing the right thing by not having me take on certain roles, which I sort of was fine about. Um, but unfortunately, I ended up having to take it on anyhow, which leaves me at where I'm at, writing things down and telling his story. And uh, I think he felt ashamed for being boastful about certain things that he's done. And now he's starting to look at everything and re-examine. And uh, so it's it's like everything, all the dust settles, all the ideas, everything comes to a point where... It doesn't work out like it's supposed to. And then he was, it uh, looks like he was very humiliated at the Lion's Gate where the, the, some of the transitions and things were made. And when all the dust settled, uh, everyone else had failed that he had selected. And the one he didn't expect to be able to make it was me. And, uh... And I'm not talking about the light workers that he put he put his his energy into a group that oh I think were deceptive. And they were hiding and they were kind of someone that Hera had put out there but he didn't realize that he thought they were just more involved. Uh well did he know and then he discovered what it was. JP, are you there? <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you uh, for covering that. I've, I've uh, changed my my trousers and cleaned up all the. It's amazing where one oh. cup of tea can go, you know. So, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I saw, I saw some sham wow the other day, and I thought <laughs> I need to buy. So, I, so I've been getting these deliveries of these cloths that absorb liquid. Really, and I, had, yeah. I got a whole pile of them this morning. It was really <laughs> great. They're really cheap and. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just ran and sort of threw a couple of those down, and I go, <laughs> and all the tea's gone. It's great, it's amazing. Um, oh, I haven't got a keyboard anymore though. Um, oh, I'll go, I can do it by mouse. All right, so it's okay. <laughs> it's all <Yeah>. good. <laughs> but it was great that, that all the all the effects went off at once because they, you know that's that they they're, they're on the keys on the keyboard, and so when the cup fell on them, it set them set them all off. That's what happened. So. so <laughs> Where are we? Um, we can go back to yeah. Midas was right. Midas is right. Midas is oh, right. Okay. Oh, a uh, no, no. Uh, all right. Let's go up to where it says, I was trying to be reasonable. Uh, hang on. Where was that? Sorry. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Meanwhile... I was trying to be reasonable and choose the people who are most capable of carrying out my assignments. You didn't seem capable to carry it out, so we brought in others. Oh, instead, it turned contrary, and they, and they were never devoted to us at all. It was another ploy of Hera, and I have nothing left in me now. How much longer do I have to endure this punishment for assisting a goblin and Hera into your reality? It has been an unrelenting nightmare. I'm going off to another sector. The Lyrans may take me in again. I think I've had enough, and I am weary. And Metis is right. Go on now with your life. Don't speak to us any more. You're deserving of so much more than to have us taking from you without any sense of reward or freedom. I agree. I mean, this is really ridiculous, but I don't do it for me. Or, or you. Actually, I do it because it's helping other people. I don't want any more star people to be harmed. 
at least tell me how can we prevent this from happening in the future. Break through the system. No one is going to do it if you don't. I don't know how. You know my circumstances. How can I break through the system? I can't break through anything. See it in your mind. You have the tools to change things, and we will assist you. The Earth can reset back to where it belongs if humanity wants it, and then all of this goes away. We've had enough, but we don't want to exit without a try. Please get people to meditate. This is the only way out. Some of you have keys to open and close the old doors that allowed these beasts in who want the planet for themselves. Don't let them have it. Humanity has so much to offer. I must go now. Love, forgiveness to me, please. Andronicus. Okie doke. Meditate yeah. and everything will be fine. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. Meditate, probably communicate. Mm hmm. So let's hear what, um, and any, any thoughts or ideas of. What? Well, I mean, that's again, you know, very candid. This is what we've been doing and, and, um, uh, I mean, what what was the what was his what was the interaction that you were having kind of towards the end there was like you know, yeah you know, we've been we've been we've been bumming you off all this all this time you know, uh, aren't aren't you bored with us, kind of thing? What was your what was your feeling you know? Like, aren't you tired of this? Yeah. Aren't you tired of helping us and we haven't been helping you? And so I think he was in a state of mind, of uh, like I wasn't high on the packing list. I mm. just wasn't important and he was pretty much going to others i think in essence he was trying to just discourage me and try to get me out and and he's felt felt like he was taking too much of my life mm. having me do this work and um i don't know it, it felt like he he knew that he was being consuming um but i i wasn't upset about it but I was upset that he didn't consider me and that he was bringing in others who ended up being spies in the first place, which I sort of knew. I knew this was going on. And I could feel it. And I think I, the point where I really felt it was when he went to, um, he went to the, uh, the, the microverse that I called, it was like a Camelot. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. It was a while back and I was like, all right, he's, he's in this world where he's still in an allegiance with, uh, these other species that are just not doing the right thing. And he's fascinated by them and he still listens to them. And, and I said, ah, oh, he's still doing this stuff and I could feel it. And, um, but finally now after all this time, he's starting to realize that, uh, it was all trickery. And meanwhile, deliberately tagging me along just to do his menial work or whatever he wanted me to do. And now he's, he's regretting it because he's seeing that, Oh, I was supposed to be here to do this work. And then he wasn't taking me very serious. And so when people say, well, you know, Oh, they're more evolved or whatever. They do pick and choose who they want to do different things with. And it's not that he, you know, completely lied or manipulated in any way. It was more of sort of this tagging along and you're not a priority right now. This is. And it turned out to be another deception of, of Hera, which he's very, very good at. He keeps hanging around with the wrong bitches, huh? It, it's, you know, it comes in many co different colors and flavors and all these different things. And many, 50 to... shades of bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and, he can't, and, and the more he kind of goes after it, the more he realizes it was, she knows him too well because she's been around him for so long. And remember, she is Juno. She's Hera. She's Juno. She's, she's her own, she's her own white witch and black witch. You know what I mean? She's, she's got both of the things going on. And so he doesn't know whether he's coming or going and he keeps on getting played and, and caught up in this, this wheel. And it's something that he just had to work through. 
he just had to work it through and, and figure out and sort it out and take off the blinders. Chasing those goblin girls. Yeah. <laughs> the goblin girls from the mystery world. So, should we move on to the... <laughs> or shall I, shall I play the goblin girl by Frank Zappa and the Mothers? Oh, Frank Zappa? Are you serious? It's a serious song. It's a real song. Yeah, I can, I there's, can... there's, a, there's a movie going on locally about Frank Zappa. Now I know why. I was drawn to it. Okay, this, yeah, play it. Okay, let's let's, just play give, it. Me, give me a, a, about 10 seconds of MP3 discographies. Frank Zappa complete discography wow. now. Um, I can't believe that. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, see, see this, these are the synchronicities that he does, and everything's playing out for a reason. Now, which one you know, the it? contrast had their opportunities. They, they've had so many opportunities to do the right thing. Yeah, and it's uh, it's a hey, where is it? I, I'm just trying to find. Are you are yes, there. It is. Yes. Well, not bad, not bad. There we go. And that's wow. it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, it's it's highly complex. You know, there's 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 all these different uh, uh, vocal rounds that they're repeating at the end, and like the the last part, he says. Uh, all the black guys in the band like having the green light shine on them because it makes them look like they've got scales all over their bodies. <laughs> it's just, it's just so many layers and it's all like, you know, about goblins and uh, some girls like to dress like, like a witch. Some girls like to dress like a queen, but I like to see, see the girls dressed up in goblin green, you know. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So what's, that's from, uh, where is it? 1981. Uh, sorry, I think it's, yeah, 1981, um, You Are What You Is, is that, Ben? Uh, is that, uh... Uh, highly controversial, uh, Frank Zappa, so they have a documentary on him right now, yeah. downtown, and I was being drawn, feeling very drawn to it. And I think the, uh, documentary is called Eat That Question. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like he must have been one of the goblins. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or is very, very, uh, interested in, and if you see him, it's sort of that, that, you know, counterculture type of thing. And, um, but, you know, who knows? Who knows? Uh, I, I'm going to have to go watch it and see what I get from it. But anyhow, uh, yeah, any, uh, anyone you know, in the Metis, chat room commenting yeah. on that one? <laughs> Frank, Frank Zappa, Frank Zappa could be Metis as well. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's. No, he's, no, he's uh, definitely not Metis. He's, no. he's quite, um, snarky. Anyway, but anyway, yeah, let's, he is, but, let's, but definitely that's, it's, it's a really completely different energy. Different energy, yeah. 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 Uh, Metis is more fourth ray. Zappa's a very fifth ray energy. Um, so it's like, um, the geeks like him. <laughs> Geek music, for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, shall we go on to, uh, Metis or Rodan? Who's next? Rodan. Rodan. We have turned a new page for humanity. Much good is happening despite the comments of Andronicus. The Lion's Gate purged much of what needed to go. I see that even the Dark Ones have become penitent and are seeking refuge from Max. It doesn't matter. They have accountability for their actions either way. I have put new leaders in charge who will carry out the next phase of our plan to clear the planet of those who are contrary of humanity. Well done to all who have surfaced to make this a landmark day of events. Our stolen scepters have been retrieved, and much has been retained by our knowledge and research. We removed all interlopers from our stations and have cleaned up the quantum field from disorder, chaos, and other anomalies. The thrones have been recovered and returned back to their former positions. To inform others, the thrones were established as a point or looking glass to assist in the plight of humanity regarding protection and shields from natural disasters as well as off-world intrusions. Many species were aware that the contrary goblins, dracos and rogue species were taking advantage in humanity from these sacred vantage points. Your question may be, why were these sacred vantage points left unattended? We were told by humanity that they wanted free reign, as they should. We still observed from afar to assist. During this time, there was a great influx of rebellion on all sectors. 
much was given to the humans who claimed to have had the highest interest in humanity. They are the ones who betrayed you and sold you out to the rogue species. We have brought many back to assist you because of your cries for liberty and the uneven balance of poverty to wealth. We have heard of your servitude to money systems that only serve a few. The most evolved species have entered in then to remind you of your current birthright and your default to return back to the earth, to sow, reap and harvest from the earth's abundance. This is to help you get back on track with your true purpose. Self-sufficiency instead of waiting for others to align with your truths. You are your own truths. You hold your own keys for liberation. You wait, you plea, and you hope for the crooked to be made straight. That will not happen. It's time to take back your ownership and live life to the fullest. If you don't, no one can do that for you. We're here to support your liberation and freedom, and this begins within yourself within your mind, with your will and your hope. I shall sustain you in all of your united efforts. Remember, as a group, you have power. More than you ever imagined or dreamed, you are the power from within and without. You have the tools, the knowledge, and the star-seed essence that makes one great. Beloved, I never left you. We have been here all along. Be at peace. Be in love. Be one with all. Be free. Ooh, cool. Wow. So, uh, yeah, what's that? Goblins. <laughs> Goblins and Dracos. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, they're, they're doing, the, I mean, you remember he, Rodan tried to help all the goblins and they just still haven't learned. Mm. Uh, so he's, he's just like, well, yeah, I mean, the rogue species, in essence. But he's, he's saying, you know, it's, you, we have the power. What the, the part that we didn't have any control of is we're, um, the, the 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 control gates of the places, uh, the locations, the thrones, wh wherever those power centers were mm. that we can't see in other dimensions. Or I can see, but well, others uh, uh, Jess, can't see. Here we are. This is what I've just been talking about in the back of Hagen's grid that I posted. Oh, okay. Yeah, these are the nodes. This is exactly what I've just been talking about. You know, we're all on track. We're all, you know, they're giving us the idea. So. Um, I posted the link in the chat room. I'll, I'll put it. I'll put it to you as well. Well, that, that whole Frank Zappa thing just completely blew me away. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh man, I remember all of his lyrics as well. That's that's the crazy thing, is that you know he's like his lyrics just stick in my head. Anyhow, <laughs> so should we hit some? Uh, should we go on to Metis, or do you have more? I think we have, we have Metis and then we have Viking coming in. So let's uh, keep moving along. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, like I said, I, I just want to do a quick review with Rodan mm. and then maybe, uh, Viking will bring up more of it. I don't know. But, um, uh, the whole concept of, you know, he, we are to take things back. Um, Andronicus mentions meditation. Um, I knew that Audrey mentioned meditation very highly as how to raise our vibration. And, um, Rodin was saying, essentially, if all the po the areas of power that we don't have any control of, we were never intended to have control of, and these are the positions of the thrones, these are the, all the different positions of power that, um, were meant for, uh, the overseers of the planet, and they backed out of them, they got into a point of, of universal chaos, and then that's when these other beings actually sat on these thrones and started to reign from there. Um, and, uh, so as well as Zoroaster screwing up our foundations in the quantum field and messing up everything to the point where I was seeing platonic solids everywhere. So all of that got cleaned up through Kraton. So Kraton took, as well as others, took care of the foundations and then the thrones and some of these other areas that needed to be reestablished and brought into the proper perspective. Then it enables us 
to then take back our our domains, which are that the earth is our our domain and our birthright. And so, if the bad species are no longer on the thrones, they can't um, take from us. But in essence, what Rodan said was. Uh, the, the thrones were given to humanity. There were certain families, which were now we're seeing as like the Illuminati or some kingly families, right? Start thinking about the Game of Thrones, you know, and how everyone oh, had their roles. Yeah. And then he, he was in essence saying that, um, you know, it's, you're really angry about what happened, but in essence, it was your own race that, uh, your species that, that turned on you. And then further brought in, uh, went along with wanting power, bringing in these other rogue species, which, uh, further exacerbated the situation to the point where, you know, they, they lost control. They were probably consumed, consumed and became nothing more than a vessel for walk-ins. And, uh, so there was an over, uh, a, a taking over of the planet. And so a lot of this is getting turned back. And that's, has a lot to do with Max's show last night. You know, it's saying, showing how he, it is his role to come back and do all this work. So, um, and so here we are. You know, we yeah. have all this stuff taken care of. Now he's saying, go ahead and start taking back the planet. Start, start tilling, start digging and planting. Uh, don't wait for anyone to tell you how to live your life. You live your own life. Um, you know, be vocal, uh, and, and, will be able to then make a change because all of this other stuff was in the way. Even though we were doing everything we could, we didn't realize that there were all these other pieces that were out of place. So, but we're doing good work. Let's keep on moving forward and uh, let's read meet us. Hello, flower. You look in sundry places for happiness. Why not let it go and throw passion to the wind? You know you are now my favourite one. I delight in your presence as never before. I am here now full of the greatest love for life and more than ever before. Here I lay by a babbling brook with all the greenery beneath me and a quiet song on my lips. I watch the birds flutter to and fro. I take on the hill as my perfect backrest and lounging couch. All that I need is a sweet morsel of food, maybe a cake with dripping honey and hot black tea and a drop of cream. I do fancy the finer things. Ah, breath of fresh air. Then a guard arrives. Are you? What are you doing in the Queen's garden, you vagabond? What do you have in your pocket? A stolen bit from the Queen? Me? Are you addressing me? Hi, I'm the nephew of Sir John and have all the consent to be here. What is your name, sir, and why do you disrupt my rest? Oh, sorry, sir. I had mistaken you for somebody else. Have a good day, sir. Yes, yes. Be on your way now. Oh, Flower, you stir up things when I speak to you. Don't you realise that? I could be on my merry little way and then you arrive and I am on the stage where everybody notices me. What is that all about? I don't know. I'm just speaking with you and, and then suddenly it happens, doesn't it? We need to cloak you with a cloud. You're much too open. Tell me, why are you upset with your life? I know things have not gone in your favour, but you have not sort of stated your plans for what should be ahead. So much is happening around you that it takes you for a ride instead of you driving to your desired destination. I know, I know, you've got a lot, different lot in life than I do. Your agreements have kept you bound, not free. Free yourself from them. Go underground. Don't be so forward and try to share your knowledge with everyone. It only hurts in the end. Betrayal, fear and confusion. That's what you will end up with. I know. I thought, let me inform people about what was going on and then they imprisoned me. Do you remember that? I tried to be lovely, wholesome and giving. Put me in the hole, the stocks, the Iron Maiden. Well, I guess it was. I was never in the Iron Maiden, but, but it sounded good. <laughs> uh, anyhow, we're not required to inform. They are here to figure it out and evolve on their own. Why do you trouble yourself with these things? Now, don't be so sorrowful about it with that pouting face and sad eyes. 
I'm just trying to protect you from it all, like a like an older brother, you know. Many have suffered. Don't dare say the planet is round. Don't talk about gravity. Don't talk about the hollow Earth and the stretches of our solar system. Don't ever dare say that there are other civilizations on other planets. All of these things have caused such great heartache to those who dared to share openly their ideas. Look at Tesla. You think he was a happy man? Did he need the recognition or did it cause him to go further inward, isolated and unloved? No one ever considers this part. Now, observe my life. Carefree, I can go as I please, travel to the furthest reaches of life and yet tumble around with a rent, with a wench or even dwell around, <laughs> sorry, and yet <laughs> tumble around with a wench or even dwell around the most humblest of homes. I can walk into a gallery of the most stately of homes and be greeted well, fed well, and being given the finest of clothing for a crucial morsel of information. What would you like to do? Choose well, flower. Don't hesitate to learn from me. I am your wise brother. Step out while you can. Mm. <laughs> you got a little song. It is his song. Yes. <laughs> It has to get the guitar ready. I put the guitar on, and um, there's lots of cables involved and, and straps. Anyway, oh, and then the cable, and then <laughs> the snap. Keep the, keep the teacup away from it. Yeah, there's. All right, I'll try. I'll put this glass. You know, I'll put this glass. Move that glass further in there. There you go. Yeah. once again To confess, yes. Uh, this afternoon, I did one small play, bit of playing, and I was trying to figure out Michelle by uh, Paul McCartney, 
And oh. um, so they got, there was a little bit in there, if anybody could notice. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It, yeah. Anyway, uh, the old descending. So I, maybe I'll find a better melody. I'm not very good at making melodies up in, in on the thing. So it's kind of, anyway. Well, it's difficult. It's very challenging. You never, you never even saw the lyrics. You, you're trying to create something. And I think kind of you channel a lot of the stuff. You know, I, I channel in the information, but clearly you're channeling the uh, inflections and, and the way that things are said. I mean, they're, I mean, they're done so perfectly that, um, like, I haven't discussed with you how they said some of these things, but you're just doing it in that way and the same with the music mm. so it's 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 ab- absolutely very very interesting yeah. isn't it yeah anyway so uh, and again let's just have a quick look and and everybody in the chat room is saying you know featherwell is saying sounds like an ending um and uh you know vanessa saying been sounding like it's been on the way to ending for a while now almost a cleanup deal right now and she's yeah. still thinking one day, Andronicus would ask Jessica, did you just look outside the window and there he'll be? <laughs> that would be, that, that would be a, the, one of those moments in the story, you know, in the that film. Be, in the right film. Here in person. Yeah. 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 I, I don't, I don't know. Um, he's, he's finding, he's still finding himself wherever he's at and uh, he may always be finding himself and exploring and trying to figure things out. Um, but it's all good. It's all whatever, whatever is right for him. He, he contributed a lot. He learned a lot at some, you know, the school of hard knocks in a lot of way. He's, he's one of those people that gives us a example of, of the hard journey. That, that some people go through and they have to. But um, I'm not sure it's the ending. I think that it's maybe the ending of a phase, an aspect of it. Uh, it's a transition. Uh, I think the Lionsgate brought in something, some new energy. And uh, that's where um, I think uh, Viking said he wanted to speak today. And um, I think this is where he enters is is. What actually happened during Slainsgate? Meanwhile, at Stately Wayne Manor. <laughs> so we're waiting for Viking. Meanwhile, at Stately Viking Manor. <laughs> hey, Viking, how you doing, mate? GP, I'm doing well. Welcome to Andronicus. Hello, hello, Viking. Woo! Been, <laughs> did you hear hear Frank Zappa? We played Frank Zappa. I did. I I did. <laughs> I don't remember that song. I think I heard it once or twice in my life. So um, I really was was uh, moved by the show last night. Um, how, how are you referring to this this uh, entity, Adrian? Yeah. We call him or Audrey, Audrey or uh, uh, it's it's kind of not or it's not quite Audrey, but it's kind of not quite Audrey. It's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 Audrey. Okay. Yeah. Well, Aud- his information was pretty pretty pro- profound and really confirmed a lot of what what, what I was seeing and uh, currently seeing. Um, uh, his take on um, you know the healing of this planet and uh, the. Uh, the need for coalition um, because it is about vibrational resonance. And uh, he, he spoke a lot about this, uh, about, about the attuning of, of our collective consciousness. And this is what's being referred to in the show uh, today is that it's through our collective consciousness that we can create, as you pointed out, this grid, which is really interesting. And I, I'm on grid 17, by the way, aligned with Mount Shasta. Uh, that's my, that's my grid, grid point. Um, and it is creating this network. It's like a web. It's like a web that surrounds this planet. And the more we can feed into it on a higher vibrational level, it becomes a protective shield. You know, they, they can only attach us if we entangle ourselves in, 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 in the chaos and in, in, in surrendering ourselves. This is where we give our power away. And to reclaim ourselves is to, is to, is to, 
is to find the path within through meditation, which is basically centering ourselves, you know, really taking a step back, honor, honoring a higher awareness with, with uh, unconditional love, which, which is through non-judgment and again, accepting our role in life and really, you know, and taking back, taking back this planet. As was pointed out, you know, we really need to take the planet back. You know, we can do, do that is through the alignment and coalition of our collective energies. Absolutely. Um, that That's exactly what Rodan was saying is, you know, we have been waiting for someone to come in and rescue us. Uh, many of our attempts have, um, to kind of hold the line to uh, speak out, to pick it, to um, complain, uh, to really stand up to what's going on. It's, it's almost as if we didn't have much power to do so. And so, and, and, and the star beings keep on saying we do. I mean, even Audrey said, you know, just a large gathering could do it, could overtake some of these people. But um, what Rodan pointed out is that there were some, some things that needed to be corrected first and they stepped in and corrected their parts. So it's becoming, it should become easier for us to stand up for what is our truth. The problem is, is everyone's like, well, yeah, we already went down that road before and let's not go there again. But I am seeing a movement of people who are taking back the, back the earth. They're going back to the reset so that we would be living similar to the way uh, the other civilizations that are successful are living. And that is, um, you know, caring for ourselves as far as uh, planting, rebuilding, establishing um, what we need, you know, not getting into this, this uh, excessive living and keeping things somewhat simple caring for one another on the planet, um, but not enabling people, how, having people step in and, and contribute, share their gifts. They're all a spark of the divine. They all have a star seed energy in them. Everyone has so much to give, and uh, we're reawakening to our roots and who we are and why we're here. Yes, and uh, <clears throat> one of the analogies he used uh, last night was, and it's a classic analogy of being in, being in an airplane and the uh, and the, uh, the oxygen mask drop. You have to put yours on first. You have to really be able to care for yourself before you can help others. And too many people out there are wanting to go out and and be the mm-hmm. vanguard and help everybody, but but they themselves are are you know caught up in in, in this. Uh, the chaos of our times, and we really can't vicariously heal pe- pe- people unless we are strong with our intent, we are strong with our purpose, understanding of, of who we are and why we're here. You know, the, the, going back to the first and second law of, of Rodan, you know, it's really about, uh, you know, you know, making the change from within, making the at the effort to really um, come to a point of clarity. The clarion call once again, because because it is about about centering ourselves, doing a spring cleaning of everything in our life that no longer serves us, material and etherical. It's really important. We have to clear ourselves. We have to do a cleansing, and that's what this lion gate is. It, it was a huge galactic energy wave that swept our planet for about three weeks, and it, and it enabled us a point of realization. Of, of what's next. And you're right, it's, it is a reset. Mm-hmm. You know, basically we, we ended with a galactic oil change. You know, we, we got our, our cylinders tuned and uh, tires changed. You know, we, we are ready, but where we're going with this is really important to, to understand. It, 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 it's where we as individuals are willing to take the stand and how we're going to affect the overall resonance of this planet, because it is about, as, as JP had pointed on this grid, it, it is about, you know, really, really, really finding a focal point wherever we are on this planet and harmonizing and creating a real ripple effect that, that we join together because it is affecting multitudes of people 
that that aren't even listening to the show, as you pointed out before, it's rippling out. You know, we are we are creating a connective tissue here to our higher awareness and, and to a galactic understanding of where we are to go and what what our because we are affecting the entire universe. There, you know, we have we have multiple races. You know, it's kind of kind of, kind of being in a a, a stadium and they're, they're in the bleachers cheering us on, and we really have to, you know find the coalition of force to, to be able to win this game. Mm-hmm. It's winning for ourselves. It's winning for the next generations. It's, it's winning for humanity. Um, another thing that Audrey said last night was that um, there's the, the, the powers are going, if, if they were allowed to continue doing what they're doing, they would wipe out so many innocent human souls that really have value, have purpose, have intention, and were chosen to be here at this time. What right do they have to step in and to disrupt and endanger anyone at this point? And so uh, that that's why it's very, very important that we're vigilant, not so much taking up arms, I mean, that's someone else's issue. Uh, I feel like my purpose here is to remind everyone to go within, to bring in this, this meditation and uh, this, this connectedness through communication through the web uh, by coming in through the network of well, spirit, connecting in with those that are doing things for the planet, those that are creating, uh, utilizing large land masses to build farms and to create uh, community living and, or, you know, create your own community living or just establish, you know, a way that um, uh, you can help yourself first and then help others or be way showers, teachers, people that help others to learn and to evolve. I mean, all of this is happening now. So we're, we're stepping into the new phase now. So I want to, I want to, Viking, I want you to talk about this Lionsgate because um, I said I was actually at a session. There was a woman that was doing an event, and I began I began to share information. And I said the Lionsgate is open, and when it came out, I was like, "Why did I just say that? I don't even know what that means." Uh, about two days later, it was eight eight twenty sixteen, so there's four eights there, and then that's when. I, I ended up connecting with Viking that day, or was it that day or the day after? And I said, I, I said something. He said something about the Lions Gate and said, "Oh, the, today is the the Lions Gate." And I said, "What does that mean?" I just said that. So explain to everyone what that actually means. <clears throat> well, I'm I'm, I'm um, got so so many levels to it. Um, you, what I am being uh, shown. And as I have been mentioning earlier in this conversation, is that it is a galactic wave, of vibrational energy of intent that's, that, that's just sweeping our planet. And it's affecting every one of us on a, on a DNA level. So you have the Kundalini, which basically uh, stores our, 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 our DNA, and our pineal gland activates our pineal gland. So it, it, what, what it's doing is is bringing us into a higher activation, you know. But but in the process, like any any time you 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 have a higher exposure of 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 awareness of who we are and what we're doing and and our purpose in this life, it's going to show us the contrast and and show us the fragments and the shards that need to be dealt with. And this is why people are having a hard time is because you know they're they're it's like anything. In order to move forward, you have to basically you know, moving forward with the, uh, you know, the true sense of self, we, we have to collect the fragments and deal with the issues that are at hand. And, and this is what life is doing. It's showing us these scenarios that, that are depicting the, these major chaoses that, that we individually possess in order to move forward. It's a time of healing. You know, it's the time of healing. He, healing is no more than just being aware of that, which needs to be taken care of. And, and, and bringing the awareness that's needed to process it, 
with love and understanding so we can become more of an essential being. And it is a reset. We are now moving forward. This is not a dress rehearsal. We are, we are in the thick of it. And we're being put to test. You know, the, the test here is, is, is really through our integrity and commitment to do the work. You know, who's on board and who, who, who's not, you know, it's, it's really what it's about because there is no second test. There is no, there, there, there is, there's not going to be another opportunity. You know, uh, we, we have to really find our determination and, and make the, the, the choices necessary to move forward. Because otherwise, we really get left, 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 left behind. I mentioned this in, a, in our prior show. You know, this is about really finding the polarity, which is moving forward, energy moving forward, and not getting caught up in the chaos. And really, you know, I think the trick here is not to get entangled. So be the observer. Really realize these are situations that are brought into our our uh, peripheral awareness to in the form of challenges to be able to move forward. It's a healing experience. Then we can become truly who, we, who, who we're meant to be to find the coalition needed to heal this planet. It, as I said before, to heal our broken hearts into one beating heart of love and compassion. You know, that's very interesting because, you know, we've had discussions about this and how uh, some of the, the, the attacks the attacks are not all like, you know, this is a war, this pestilence, there's plagues, there's illnesses. The, I, I think the, one of the huge attacks was an attack on uh, the heart and the hearth, the home life, the families, uh, destroying relationships, uh, destroying love, people coming together, uh, other people stepping in and destroying those relationships. Um, just, just a whole bunch of, events occurring where, where children are feeling abandoned from their parents uh, because there's this conflict between parents. Uh, this wasn't something that was widespread throughout the, wor- the world. It really wasn't. It really is more recent. And so it, it created another form of, of uh, distraction from our spiritual connection to source. Just when it was time for we were starting to awaken up in the dawning of the age of Aquarius, which we believe is we're stepping into Aquarius right now, and all of these things happening. I mean, this, these are not just songs. These are these are uh, guidance to help us to get on track and where we should be. And then what happens is, in an unexpected way, we got severely attacked, but we didn't identify it as that. So we need to bring back in the love energy, calling in the energy of love and the love of the heart, our love to source, our love to whoever our belief system is, our love to one another in humanity, our love and partnership, friendship, family, siblings, parents, children, spouses. And if you don't want to get married, because marriage has become such a terrible thing for a lot of people now, for other people, they still embrace it. And and it's valuable because it's worked for them. But for those many, many, many people who have suffered through relationships and divorces and the horrible things that happened, that right there, alleviate that. And people can begin to live again. They can live in, in the way that they were, this is not the intention of source for us to live this way and in pain. Our relationships should be free flowing and loving and understanding and the communication should be beautiful. And so anything disharmonious is remnant of the energy that was brought in. It is not our truth. It is not something we have to embrace as our reality and we don't have to accept it anymore. We don't have to tolerate and say, well, this is the way it is for everyone. No, it isn't. Let's, let's, let's ask source to bring in the truth, reset our love energy on the planet. And with love, there's nothing more powerful. That's how they got us. They took away our love. 
that was our power source. That was our power grid. It was love. And so we're going to return back to that. And the Lion's Gate, that's pretty powerful. And, um, you know, Viking, you have so much uh, interesting information. And JP, um, both of you, uh, I'm very grateful that, that you're here on this journey with me. There's no possible way I could have done this by myself. Um, I'm actually amazed that it has gone to this degree. And I feel like I'm closing one book and maybe ready to approach another. Feel free to speak. <laughs> one of you. Well, it's interesting that uh, it's, well, I mean, it's just over a year. But it does feel... Like, yes, uh, we're now a turn of the circle, a turn of the spiral, um, a cycle. What is this? 60, 60 shows. <laughs> it's like something like that. And it's like a, uh, um, you know, a clock, 60 minutes. You know, there's, a, there's all these different cycles, you know, and it's one of them. I'm just looking at, you know, I'm near point 11 on the uh, Becker Hagen grid. And uh, I think there's one of these uh, sub-ley lines that runs right through, or at least very close to here. So I'm going to do some investigation on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And so, well, you know, we have Viking is uh, in California. Um, Max is down in the Carolinas. I'm here in Massachusetts. Uh, you're in Scotland. Um, we had um, Jacob, Jacob, yep, who was out there in uh, on New Zealand. So we we, in, you know, of course Olivia is over in uh, France. She didn't speak today, but she uh, provided some information regarding the website. So we, and and then let's let's look at all the people that are in the in the chat room today. Where they're, but these are, these are all the notes that you're looking at. All the lights, all the stars, the stars that reside from within, the stars that we increase and build up and share. And bringing in the beautiful Lyran energy that I think that JP, you manifested, that allowed us to interact with Audrey. Well, it came from the heart. That's all yeah. I can say. And it that's seems to be the place to find stuff, to find amazing mm -hmm. stuff that just kind of unpacks itself. And, you know, this is what you you did this. It was part of your service from your heart to do the to do the, the, the first reading and the first connection. And it all, you know, it's all through the heart. And that's what Rodan said a couple of weeks ago, isn't it? No, no, that wasn't about Rodan. <laughs> it was that other channeler on Max's show. Who I said, uh, do you want any messages from my guides? And, and bloody Toth came through. So, mm. um, uh, and, but it, one of the things that struck me is it is through love and love alone that we will, uh, conquer. And l war yes. is not to be won, but to be, uh, you know, conquered, which is like conquer the need for war. Well, when we step into that point of love, we're immediately raising our vibration yeah. where we're we're no longer attracting and aligning with uh, the energy of warfare. So that makes sense, doesn't it? Absolutely. It's the uh, quite the opposite. And uh, and I think um, from my my connection with my guides from, from 10 years ago, they said, you know, I've got 10 years to figure this thing out. Okay, thanks very much. Um, <laughs> you know, really, they said 10 years. <laughs> and it was about 10 years ago. Um, and they said, uh, you know, to help end the current preoccupation, or maybe not even help end, to end the current preoccupation. And the preoccupation is with war. Mm -hmm. Um, and why does, why do we have war? And, you know, there you said perfectly jealousy. Right. So you bring right. it all the way back. Trauma. I want what you, I want what's not mine. Yeah. I want to take from you. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel, I feel that like I haven't got enough. Yeah. 
or you you make me you know I feel like I need to have what you have. Mm. Well, when I see you, you remind me of how little I have myself, and I feel that I want to be in some way like you, and and I feel that you owe me it because of your greatness, and so I feel the right to be able to steal it from you. Mm -hmm. It's that contorted. It's even worse than that. I'm sure it's even like there's a few more twists in it than that. Yeah. Quack, quack. Very much. If you Mikey. want another 15 minutes, um, because we started late and I've got no plans, I'm actually gonna, I'm actually going to play, uh, Jean-Michel's, Jean-Michel Jarre's, uh, Oxygen, um, uh, in its full entirety, uh, because it's only about 40 minutes, um, at the end of this, because I think we could all do with some oxygen, really. And just, mm. just listen yeah. to this beautiful music and breathe. Mm. So it does, it, it does round it off to, uh, meditation and love and, uh, and, uh, this new phase that we've stepped through as, as Viking has said. Uh, Viking, um, uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to, uh, to comment on the, uh, on the, your wave of love here, um, to really, to really try to understand what love is. Because we can throw the word out there and uh, all have a con- con- concept, <clears throat> but I, the way I, the way I like to see it, theoretically, it's uh, divine force energy. So divine force energy is spirit. It's what it's what the planet emanates, and it, it gathers its spirit from validation of uh, our sun and the galactic universe, and it creates a pulse of energy, and this energy then filters through our being. As I said before in, in, in a prior show, it, it travels up our, our chakras. And when it hits our fourth chakra, our heart chakra, it, um, it, 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 it manifests as love. And, um, this love being a sense of understanding of who we are and then being able to, uh, then have a relationship with life is through our true intent and true intent and purpose and integrity that we share with uh, other people, our, our gifts, our passion, our sense of being, and, and in, in, in a way that integrates in society as uh, a wholeness of being. Um, it really is a multifaceted diamond, you know, all the facets are a relationship that we have with with uh, individuals and, you know, our skill art, skill craft, and skill set, uh, with the love of, of this planet, all its life form. And all of the due diligence it takes to survive as one, as you pointed out through garden communities, through craft, through uh, uh, m- music and art and healing and, and love and, 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 and raising children. It's all part of the g- galactic um, gifts that we were given on this planet uh, to be able to balance this in harmony with our life than being able to share this with others. Unfortunately, um, we all suffer from a, 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 a particular a cocktail of PTSD, which then in our, in our third chakra creates our emotional, um, it filters out our, our, our emotions. And this, this is where our tra- trauma is. And so it, it, the spirit traveling up is stuck in the third chakra in the form of, in the form of trauma. Which, which is then segregates us and separates us as individuals. And then we go into a survival mode of what we think we need to do to survive. And it separates us out. And this is where greed and, and jealousy and, and, um, you know, pain and sorrow exists. And again, it's just through these traumas and this JP and you pointed out it's these, these are where we have to go to, to heal these fra- these fractals and these soul shards. So we then can become true to ourselves. So, our, so the flow of this galactic energy in, in, in this universal life force can flow freely. So the challenges right now that we're faced with is to heal our soul shards, to heal our trauma, to give ourselves forgiveness, give, give ourselves an understanding. It's like putting the pieces of the puzzle together so we have a true understanding. We're sitting here balancing these pieces, but we're, there, 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 there's no continuity to have a vision of what we truly are. 
it really is about collecting these pieces of these puzzles and and, and, and un- understanding the relationship that it has caused so we can move forward, you know, and, and, and be able to embrace this divine life force of love. Anyway, that's just my understanding. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I think uh, there's so many different perspectives and angles to look at it, and you're right. Um, there's so much injury that people are carrying that it's hard for them to open their hearts up uh, to love, to unconditional love, to um, acceptance of others because a lot of people are so injured they can't accept themselves. And uh, so universal healing is also uh, an interplay, a part of this, as we begin to uh, um, come back. But one of the things that I've recognized is one way through the injury and the hardship of life is helping others. It seems to lift the spirit. It seems to be good in a place of gathering where you're seeing someone and without jealousy and without anger and without frustration, you welcome and embrace that couple or that, that, you know, if someone's getting married or someone's moving or they're doing something and they need your help and you reach out to help and not just to get something back, but because it feels right to help or to help up some people that are um, in a poverty situation. And just, um, you know, if you have a little bit of change in your pocket, you can share with them uh, someone that uh, working in a place where people are in need in one way or another. I will say that that has the greatest remedy for lifting the spirits than anything is when you're actually there participating and helping others and you're lifting things. But if you are doing things, um, you know, I mean, people try to retreat and they find substances and other means to change their moods and whatever they're experiencing. But um, that that is one of the ways out, one of the ways out of sorrow and pain and uh, depression. Uh, It's always been my tool to exit out that's the you know this work right here is my devotion and to help me to sort through the madness of all this information that was coming through me and to be able to um, share this with people to help them find their way through it and meanwhile i'm finding my way through it as well because then i'm helping others i'm i'm you know sharing the information that i'm aware of and so um, that is that is the ladder out of some of the the sadness, but there is other work that that may need to be done. Um, I know that JP does work and he meets and does sessions with people. I do as well. Uh, now that my son's going off to college, I you know I would highly encourage people to contact me to do sessions. And for those, if I had missed anybody. I believe I had contacted everyone that I was supposed to meet with, but um, for those that want to reconvene and uh, connect with me and do a session, let's do that. Let's take care of things, and I will do my best to help. So um, I think it's all good. I just want to comment on uh, helping people because this this is something you have to be very aware of that you can only help people that are willing to help themselves. You know, you can only be there as support mm-hmm. and a factor of validation and uh, help them to recognize uh, their particular uh, onslaught or or pain or suffering. Uh, you can't change pe- a pe- a, a people. It's really important that you need to choose wisely in, in, in where you're, you're reaching out and where you're putting your energy because you don't have your energy sucked away. You, you don't want to... Um, get get entangled in people's uh, particular situations unless you really know that 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 they're in alignment with, with who you are, because it could be a, um, an emotional trap, you know, that that you're reflecting. You know, you're vicariously trying to change some somebody, but what you're trying to change in them is the aspect you're trying to change in yourself. You have to really take that energy back and find that uh, find find that uh, focal point, that center. 
we talk about meditation, you find that center of your being and then um, unravel, you know, the, uh, you say they, they speak of it in the Vedas as an onion. You got to peel the onion and each layer takes you down to another layer. But finally, you do come to core essence, you know, and, and you can share these experiences. You you, you can um, validate these experiences, but you can't change anybody. So you have to really be be, be careful to, 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 to align with individuals right now that are resonating on your vibration. And, and you might have to uh, eliminate certain relationships because they're pulling or drawing upon you in a negative way. And it's really important to make the hard choices right now. It could be family, friends, it could be, it could be your spouse, you know, it could be your, your girlfriend or, bo- or boyfriend. You know, you have to really get out of dysfunctional situations and come true to who you are and to know that the universe will provide you with, with the, the, the your, your galactic fam- family, I was pointing out on the show last night. Um, it, is, it is a time of healing. And so what is healing? This is really something I like to get, get into on our next show. Uh, in the Interstellar Council, is to really start to delve into this third episode of three being very uh, prominent because it's about it's about coming true to who you are and how can we heal? And what does it mean to heal? And I think that this would be a really nice um, a topic mm-hmm. to uh, embrace because it is an embracing. You know, yeah, the, the, as I point out, the, the splinter is there; it's causing pain, and we've gotten used to it, but. We have to now, you know, as I said, clarify our conscious awareness so we can become more atoned and attuned so we can create this grid around this planet of, of, of harmony and, um, and, and, and as you point out, love. You know, love is a key, key point here, but we have to start from within. I agree. And uh, there's this, like I said, there's so many different perspectives of uh, reaching out and helping people. And, uh, you know, it's, I agree with you, uh, Viking, people have to help themselves. But sometimes it's that blind spot in ourselves that we go and to reach out to others. And I do it. Everyone does it. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's all, it's all good. Uh, so, but there are, you know, relationships that you just don't resonate with anymore. And, um and that's fine. Uh, take the higher road. Uh, step back. Observe. Connect in within to get that guidance. You know, there's there's no other shortcut. People ask me, how do you do the stuff that you do? It's really, really simple. I spend time meditating. If you do not have that inner connection, it doesn't matter what you're trying to do. It's it's not going to be right. You can't go all on the outside and reach out to others for answers. You always have to connect within. And then the points where you can't quite see, that's where you get advice. But some of the stuff people don't know. I mean, so many people are looking for spiritual answers for physical problems, too. You really need to be safeguarding what you're eating. The food that we are are being given is not the healthiest and was not intended to keep us healthy. It's was intended and created as a system to keep us medicated and going to doctors. And so we need to really readjust and change our diet, considering what we're consuming. Um, there are, you know, people like, um, or I say Audrey last night mentioned about uh, food consumption and that anything is living that we should not consume. Um, you know, that's, that's on a personal level, but it's actually something to consider even if you've never, you know, had a problem with that. And, uh, you know, learning, learning to be completely in harmony with everything, everything living. I mean, even Audrey, Audrey even talked about consuming plants was an issue for him. And, uh, I know what he's talking about because plants are living things and, we found that out on the journey into Neptune um, when I recognized that, that at some point the plants actually, you know, started developing and had heads, you know. And here we see, you know, like a head of lettuce, a head of, like a cabbage. Oh, yes, you you um, get a head of lettuce, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk about that. It's like they're living. They're, they really are. And, uh, um, but we're allowed to consume them, but I guess the, the uh, Lyrans, 
um, don't consume the whole plant. They extract some things from the plant. Maybe like we take a fruit or something, you know, from a tree. I don't know, but um, either way, that, I mean, all of this is, is a learning process. All of this is to help us to gain control of our personal lives, gain control of what's going on on the inside of us, gain control of what's going on in our thoughts, in our heart space, in our connection to source. And this is the new reality. This is the new paradigm. And although it's an old paradigm, but we are able to exercise it in a way that we haven't been able to do in thousands of years. So let's take advantage of that. And I know that, you know, people feel like they've been, every time they step out, there's another problem. Um, move through that. Move through that fear. Be fearless. Be free. And and get through that, that point of it where it's, it's difficult. So I, um, as he pointed, as he pointed, Audrey pointed out, as above, so 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 below. It's, it's, it's very true what you're saying about, about about diet. I lived in an intentional community back in the '80s, so it was an organic farm, and I noticed that eating the food off the land actually created a higher vibration, and it, it literally did affect my conscious being. And and what I'm what I then started to realize is people that were in chaos. We're attracted to foods that kept them in that perpetual chaos. Fast food, for example, you know, keep, keeps you in the pain and suffering that that people live in, and, and they're, they they gravitate towards and they actually gravitate towards these diets that mi mi mimic their vibrational intentions. So it is really, if you have a clean and pure diet, you actually will, and it's necessary to raise your higher vibration. Um, uh, it, 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 it's just so true. As above, so below. As below, so above. You know, you know the foods we eat do do resonate a vib vibratory frequency. And as you start to ascend, you start to start looking at more of a vegetarian, vegan diet. Um, you start to you know understand the consumption of water. And uh, I, I, I like like JP. I, I, I do borax. You know, which helps to decalcify the pineal gland. I also do baking soda, which is actually an amazing cure because it helps to stabilize the alkalinity of the body. It actually can cure cancer, can 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 help you ward off the chemtrails because the chemtrails are setting down a fungus and uh, the borax and the and the um, baking soda actually kills the the fungus, which is what black goo is. It's essentially a fungus. Um, you know, it also wards off uh, viruses and cancer cells. Uh, and then you, 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 you couple this with your various, uh, you know, a, 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 extracts and tinctures and, and, you know, balancing, balancing your diet with, with, with the food combinations. It all does create a higher frequency. It's so true. It's so true. So we're, uh, about out of time really for the uh, two hours. Um, mm -hmm. Jessica, what's, uh, your final statement for your show. Final statement is, oh, there's nothing more powerful than love. And I love all of you. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for being a part of, of this one big family and extending not only on this planet, but beyond the stars, through the sun gate, and giving everyone a loving hug and greeting. May there be peace, happiness, and more insights. Create your own realities. I love you all, and we will be back next week. Thank you, Viking. Thank you, JP. Thank you, guys, and uh, it's been it's been a, a pleasure to, to come on your show. Um, self self love is where it starts. You know, practice some mirror gazing. Love what yeah. you see. Embrace, embrace your essence, and then share the, the newfound vision of who you are with loved ones. Thank you. And also, Interstellar Council next week is the second part of the show, so stay tuned for that next week. Bye, you guys. We came from the future.